Hello community! Today we'll talk about self-instructed fine-tuning of large language models like our alpaca model. So in total I received 36 questions from my viewers, so I tried to structure this a little bit. So what will be in my video? I will go a little bit about the delta of instruct fine-tuning compared to the classical fine-tuning. Then we will have a look at the instruct fine-tuned data sets. How do they look? What's different? Then we will create an instruct fine-tuned data set. We will synthesize via OpenAI, like in Alpaca, Stanford Alpaca, a synthetic instruction data set for instruct fine-tuning. We will instruct fine-tune then a transformer model with our created instruct fine-tuned data set. We will talk about the advantages of instruct fine-tuning versus fine-tuning, how to create a specific data set for actually instruct fine-tuning a specific model, and talking about details, I will end with some dependencies of parameter size of the transformer model of your LLM about cost, about speed, and about time improvement. So this will be the overall outline for the talk. So here we go, alpaca lorora. So we have typical an instruction. An instruction is followed normally by an input and an output. So in the input, we have the sentence, our main object. The bees were humming in the sunshine in my garden, while an Airbus A380 crossed the Atlantic. And now I give an instruction what to do and how to create the output sentence. So my instruction is deduct the time of year from the input sentence. Oh, it's empty. In the summer. While an Airbus crossed the Atlantic in the summer. So you see he added, if you want, a solution here to the end of the sentence. This is a typical instruction data set where you have an input-output relationship with an instruction given explicitly in the training data set so that the system can learn the relation between input and output is the content of the instruction. So next one is change the animals to elephants and the airplane to an F-35 jet. So this means the system is able to identify where is the animal in the sentence and what is exactly an airplane and how to change it. So let's have a look how he handles this one. The elephants were humming in the sunshine in my garden while a fighter jet F-35 jet crossed the Atlantic. So he correctly identify where's the airplane, where are the animals, how to change the subjects here in my sentence. So you clearly see the sense of an instruction data set that we provide to the LLM for training so that the system can learn from an input-output relation where he can analyze the sentences and to get back and I always would have said to understand the content of the instruction but of course there is no understanding there is just a annual network that says, okay, if this, then this. So a lot of questions were about, hey, Stanford Alpaca, please, can you explain what happened in the self-instruct phase of Stanford Alpaca, step by step? So beautiful. There was this paper about self-instruct. Here you have the archive preprint, and this was one of the main graphics. And as you can see, we have three times an interface here with a large language model with a chat GPT or a GPT-4. So let's have a look what's happening here. Important is one sentence to prompt an off-the-shelf LLM like chat GPT with Alpaca to generate both new instruction for our instruction fine-tuned data set and the corresponding instances. So here we have our instruction generation and here we define and create instances of this instruction. Now, it is important to be really clear in our wording. Therefore, let me reframe the title. I try to synthesize with GPT-4, for example, 
a self-instructed dataset, four, instruct fine-tuning, a GPT-4, a T5, any LLM, any BERT model, any transformer-based model, or even a multimodal transformer system. So please note, we have at first to have a data set for our fine-tuning task, and we do not have the classical fine-tuning task, but we have a special modification, instruct fine-tuning. So with this out of the way, here we go. It is such a beautiful diagram. Now, let's take the first step. The first step is the humans write here examples, 175 written human examples. They are put here in, in a pool. And then we say, step one, hey, ChatGPT4, generate a similar expression for an instruction, like in the examples I provided to you. So ChatGPT looks here at the 175 human written examples and generates here instruction, give me a quote from a famous people on this topic. So here we have our first instruction. Great. Now you see, there is now at the output here again. So step two is, hey, ChatGPT4, we ask, is this instruction you generated here a classification task? Yes or no? So the authors decided for them it is important to separate out all classification tasks, you know, this is a car, this is an aeroplane, this is red, blue, blue, green, or yes and no answers. So everything that has a class uh, with class labels attached to it, they want to have here a specific instruction set for this. So beautiful. So here again, we have now the case yes, or we have the case no. So yes, it is a classification task. No, it is not a classification task. And then step three, again, you see here our little LLM, our chat GPT, we say, hey, chat GPT or GPT-4. If in case of yes, classification task, generate a corresponding class label. So this, let's have a look at this. Let's say that the instruction that GPT-4 created here is Find out if the given text, we have no idea what the given text is, is in favor of or against abortion. This is the official scientific example. This is not what I choose, but whatever. We stick with the original literature. So you have an instruction where you have the given text, you have no idea what it is, in favor of or against. So now you ask here, GPT-4, generate a responding class label. Chat GPT goes now and says, hey, why not? Let's go with pro-abortion. Or it might say, hey, I go against abortion, whatever. Just it makes another decision in step three. So Chat GPT comes up with a class label, and the class label is pro-abortion. Beautiful. Now, if we have no, it is not a classification task, what happens? So we have now the instruction, and it's exactly the instruction that we have here in step one. Give me a quote from a famous person on this topic. And now we say, okay, so generate the corresponding input if necessary. Now, at first, you have to generate what is the topic. So ChatGPT creates out of the blue a topic and says the importance of being honest. Chat GPT could have said, uh, the topic is, why is the sky blue? Or why are there two different parts of I don't know what? It just comes up with a artificial synthetic topic. This is step three. So you see, we have now instruction generation. We ask for classification, yes or no. Here, I substituted in the original literature, it said output first. I said input last and here input first so that you really can see clearly the difference because now we have here an instruction and an input. And as I showed you in my first video, now we're interested what is the output that is referring to the input data 
and executing the instruction given in the instruction string. And then ChatGPT creates here the output. Now here in the first case, if we have an instruction, GPT-4 comes up with a synthetic class label. Now it has to come up with an input text and this is why I say now input last. This is here the last step. And here input first, if you want, after the instruction. This is all there is to it. It's very simple. And you might say, hey, 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 what does he mean if necessary? And I say, what? Yeah, if necessary. So what happens here? Let's have a look at this a little bit more detail. If you look at the data set here from especially Alpaca, you will see that sometimes there's an input and sometimes there's not an input. In about 40% of the cases, there is or is not an input. This is not so important. Look, if instead the instruction that was generated in step one by GPT-4 would be, give me a quote from a famous person on, and now in its, it inserts already a topic on being honest. So now we already have here, if you want, the input here in the instruction integrated. So JetGPT or GPT-4 has all the information to generate an output. If you want, you can think, okay, of being honest, then you can say, oops, uh, anyway, write the input. So then it will write, of course, it will understand this here is the input. So if there is an input or not, is not really that important if the information is provided in the instruction itself. So sometimes you will only see in the original data of Alpaca instruction and output. And it's not that the input is missing. The input is just already integrated in the instruction. So now you know this, beautiful. So, and then stop. 3.5, <laughs> it's not there, but there's an, the next step is then that ChatGPT, GPT-4 creates now the final result, the final answer. And in the first case of a classification, the answer is the input. So it says, I believe that women should have the right to choose whether or not they want to have an abortion. If this is the input, and then we go back, we have now a label of pro-abortion. You see that this label really corresponds with the content of the input. So input and class label are corresponding. This is check. And the instruction, find out if the given text is in favor or against, is also solved because given now the class label pro-abortion, we know that the given text is in favor of abortion. So this here is all there is to it if you go step by step. So if yes, as I told you, just where we have been, generate input for the class label. So for the class label, it writes here the input text. Beautiful. And you're not going to believe what's happened here on the other branch if we have no, not a classification task. Then it also writes an output. And it generates an output string where you say, give me a quote from a famous person on this topic. In the input, you define the topic and GPT-4 comes then out with the answer, the output with this particular quote. Honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom by Thomas Jefferson. No idea if this is true, but you see now the mechanism how in Alpaca or in self-instruct, we used here the interface of an AI system three times to generate here our synthetic data set. And then of course you might have here in the output a word you do not like, fight or brutal or something. So you have here a filter, you say, hey, I don't like this task, This we, we throw away this. So it goes back and now instead of 175 task, we have now, we take this task here, 176. And if you say, hey, generate 10, uh, instances, we have 185 here in the pool. And so you go on and on and on and on and on until you have 50,000, 200,000 synthetic data sets 
according to the first structured human written example. This is all there is to the alpaca dataset creation and how the interface with the AI system happens. So if you like to have it here in a clear text version, again, you have an input, you have an output, and the relation between input and output is in the instruction. And this is a data set that has a lot of information, and this is a data set that we call an instruction or instructed fine-tuned data set. Because now we use this data set to instruct, fine-tune our LLM. And if we have 50,000 of those examples, there's a lot of information our neural network can extract. So, clear, input, person, John, animal, a dog, object, a laptop. Instruction, write a story with a person, an animal, and an object. And here's the output of the system. So there's nothing to it. It is just very simple, a template structure, a clear, structured one, two, three of your text data. Now, let's say this, this guy here on the left side, here with the human brain, as you can see, is a human. And here, this beautiful illuminated something symbol here, let's say this is ChatGPT. And it tries now to mimic here the human conversation, what it learns. And you might say, yes, and? So what we do now? We take now a syringe and we say, hey, to self-instruct here that we create our data set, we go here to a little data container here in that GPT, and we extract here the knowledge from this huge model, here, this little green bulb here, we ex completely extract here the knowledge from this huge model. This is self-instruct. So, and now comes something people are amazed. The LLM model knowledge is distilled to itself. You see here, you have here in this control cycle, you have here more or less three times the same model. And now you're not going to believe it, but if Alpaca is trained on 50K data sets, 250K data set, 2 million data sets from GPT-4 extracted, it becomes more and more similar to GPT itself if this self-instruct method is applied. Now, imagine if you take now this syringe and you do not do it here for 50K, but you do it on all information reservoir here in GPT-4. If you extract here completely millions and millions and millions of times, you now extract here the knowledge with the self-instruct mechanism. Well, of course, your new model, your alpaca model or whatever you have, will become more and more similar to GPT-4 because you extract a complete information out of GPT-4. So if people are amazed by this, well, now you know it is just a logical way. Of course, it will become better and better and more similar to GPT-4. And this is why OpenAI said, hey, listen, <laughs> no way. Eh? So now, what we achieved in this first step, you understand now what is self-instruct, how we achieve it, how often we interact here with an AI system. And if you extract more and more information, your system becomes better and better. So we have now a new data set. Congratulations. We self-instructed it out of a huge GPT-4. So we have a self-instruct generated data set. We sucked out all the information from GPT-4. And now you'd say, okay, so let's create our own self-instruct data set from OpenAI in real time. Let's do it. Okay, so creating, and why we do this? Because creating a data set of instruction from scratch, remember? With Alpaca, they wrote down 175 human examples, and for the five students, it took quite some hours. 
So they say this would take a considerable amount of human resources to write more and more and more and more. So we need just a minimal set of human written instruction data set, 175 examples for Alpaca. And based on those examples, we can generate ChatGPT, GPT-4, or whatever, Flan T5, whatever LLM you have, similar synthetic data sets that are instruction based. Or and this might surprise you, and there are a lot of questions about this. We instead make use of templates of our instruction based format structure. We use those templates to transform existing data sets, and we have millions of existing data sets, into an instructional format. So either we create a new synthetic data set with ChatGPT. Or we use absolutely the same procedure, the same method of instructional format to use here the vast amount of existing data set to create instructional format. So you say, hey, wait a second, we can take all the classical data set that are available on Hugging Face in all the different languages, on all the different topics, and convert it in an instruct fine tuning data set without OpenAI, that we, we do not have to pay like uh, Alpaca $500 to OpenAI? Yes, this is exactly what I'm telling you. And you might say, why? You're not going to believe it. But it was a rainy Wednesday, October the 6th, 2021, when instruction fine-tuning was published. And this was before GPT-4 or ChatGPT was available for the public. And who did it? Well, Google Research. And they found this instruction fine tuning so helpful for their systems that they give it a special name and they called it FLAN. Yes, exactly. This is the FLAN you know. So, what they did is to train, and I showed you in my video about T5 and then FLAN T5, that they fine-tuned it on an extreme amount of available data sets for a huge amount, thousands of different tasks. So creating a data set of instruction from scratch to fine-tune the model would take a considerable amount of resources, Google writes here. Therefore, we, Google, instead make use of templates to transform existing data sets into an instructional format. Now you know where Self-Instruct and uh, Stanford Alpaca got their idea from, because it was here all along before. So let's have a look what's happening in detail. And I make it really step by step and slowly, and maybe, yes, I will repeat myself. So classical data set here on the left-hand side. You notice we have a premise an information content we call the premise. We have an information content that we call the hypothesis. And then we have a target. And this target can have different options. And you know this data set. This data set is the Stanford Natural Language Inference Corpus, SNLI. Here is it. We operated within, in, I don't know, a dozens of my videos. Hugging face data set SNLI. This is it. You have a premise, you have a hypothesis, and you have a label. And you have, I think, 570,000 examples of this. So, premise, hypothesis, label. You have three labels you have neutral, you have entailment, which says yes and contradiction, which is more or less no. So three labels, a lot of premise and hypothesis. Do you know this? And what we do is simple. We take here the content of exactly this, and we just cast a new form. We give it a new structure, and we give it multiple structures. And this structure we call a template. So here we have it. The first here, as you see in our template, is always the premise. You see, this is one-to-one -one the premise. Then we have a little bit down here in the red, we have the hypothesis. 
and we want the options. So you say, what is now? What is now? The instruction. Well, the instruction is exactly this here. Based on the paragraph above, this text data here, can we conclude that, and now comes our hypothesis, is, for example, a classification task, yes or no, or maybe. You see here also, we have a classification task. And now you know why in Alpaca and in Self-Instruct, they go for, at first, for the classification task, because in 2021, it was published exactly in this way, and Google found that this is a high-performance system if you do it in this way. So you have your first template. You have here the first data set, premise. You have your instruction, and you have your hypothesis. Think about it in a different way. You have here your input. You have your instruction and additional data to create the output. So you see, this is something you know. This is just another template form. Or we do it a different way. We do it in a way that at first the instruction, like in the video I showed you, the instruction here now from template two is read the following, whatever comes next, and determine if the hypothesis can be inferred from the premise. So you have to have tags like premise and hypothesis that the system exactly understands, either in quotation marks or whatever you write, what is the premise part, what is the hypothesis part, and then infer yes, no, maybe. It is the same data. It is absolutely the same data. It is just another template. And here comes now, let me call it the beauty of this instruction fine tuning data set methodology with this template. If you feed this template and other template forms into the fine tuning process of an LLM, the system learns a little bit different things. And I would like to show you this in detail in this video.